let's focus on shame for now. And I think with this track, when you listen to it, there's clearly uh, two different definitions of shame at play here, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. I had the idea for a while for, I wanted a song with that title, but then I was like, mm, what do you, how do you get that to work? What's it going to be? And I liked the idea that the tag would be like, what a shame in a way that's kind of tongue in cheek. Oh, what a shame. But all the shame that you carry, you know, I'm in my mid thirties. Uh, and I kind of came into my teenage years in like the early 2000s and I feel like we look at that time period now like the messaging around gender and relationships I think we now identify as quite bad and uh, yeah that was when I was forming my ideas of what relationships were and what those things should be and uh, I tell you I dated a lot of dirtbags <laughs> <laughs> but then I think that's kind of when the wiring is set you know Just to clarify what you're saying essentially back in the day when um perhaps women were expected to behave in a certain way or or, or, or do things in a certain way. It kind of shame on, on that for actually happening and occurring. I think so. And then also just like, yeah, when you have your first crushes, it's like this guy in this band or this actor or like the Ethan Hawke character in Reality Bites. And then when you date the Tesco's own brand version of that guy, <laughs> it doesn't go very well in my experience. And then now I'm like, oh, I've just got all the baggage from that and I academically know to not those kind of people but doesn't mean that i don't the wiring is still set yeah. so you know i'll see certain bands or certain films and i'll be like woof yes but no this is radio one's hottest record you might have heard it at six o'clock tonight your hottest record in the world comes from lauren maybury with a track called shame lauren hanging out right now studio make some noise for lauren maybury <laughs> Welcome, Lauren. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here and joining us. Um, I mean, shame. What a fantastic piece of music. There's so much to dive into here. And um, the second piece of the puzzle in your little solo journey that you're embarking on. Yes, yes. Slightly louder and angrier than the first slice. Yes. yes. They definitely contrast each other, which is really, really nice. And, and I think shows a really dynamic and colourful um, palette of music that we've probably got coming from you in the future. But let's focus on shame for now. And I think with this track when you listen to it there's clearly uh two different definitions of shame at play here isn't there yes yeah i had the idea for a while for i wanted a song with that title but then i was like mm, what do you how do you get that to work what's it going to be and i liked the idea that the tag would be like what a shame in a way that's kind of tongue-in-cheek oh what a shame but all the shame that you carry kind of so in theory it shouldn't be fun to write a song about that but i don't know i think i've been reflecting on a lot of stuff the last few years and I kind of came into my teenage years in like the early 2000s and I feel like we look at that time period now, like the messaging around gender and relationships I think we now identify as quite bad. Yeah, that was when I was forming my ideas of what relationships were and what those things should be. I tell you, I dated a lot of dirtbags. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think that's kind of when the wiring is set, you know? So you're hardwired to find those things alluring. And now academically I know they're not alluring, but yeah, when you have your first crushes, it's like this guy in this band or this actor or like the Ethan Hawke character in Reality Bites. And then when you date the Tesco's own brand version of that guy, <laughs> it doesn't go very well in my experience. And then now I'm like, oh, I've just got all the baggage from that. And I academically know to not date those kind of people, but it doesn't mean that I don't, the wiring is still set. Yeah. So, you know, I'll see certain bands or certain films and I'll be like, woof. Yes, but no. Yeah, absolutely. And and I and I think about this track. Um, one of the, my favourite things about it is how um, it feels so dark and sinister at points. Yet you've also got this part in the song that crops up where it almost feels like a lullaby, as well. And and there's a, there's just very fun and enigmatic elements about it too. There's loads of dy dynamism to the song. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, where where nice of you. like what where have you been pulling from and where have you been feeling inspiration from? Do you think? Well, I guess maybe because my two trades I suppose are like I was a drummer originally and then I became a singer so to me I'm always thinking about I want harmonies on harmonies on harmonies but also I like the idea of vocals being able to lead a song more rather than being like a vocal melody that you it can be part of the ins instrumentation it can be part of all the other parts of the song it can be part of the rhythm so I think there was a lot of that and yeah the mood board's definitely all stuff like PJ Harvey and Fiona Apple and Annie Lennox and things like that where yeah, I think that they have beautiful voices, but they use them quite weirdly. And I like the idea of not having to have a pretty vocal. Like, you mm. can just push your voice to do strange things to make the song, if that makes sense. Is it safe to say there's an album on the way? 
Yes. <laughs> I need to go home and finish it. At the end of this run of touring, I'll finish it. But it's, I would say, it's there or thereabouts. And what's it been like being on stage as you, as Lauren Maybury? Yeah, that was quite, <laughs> that's quite odd at first. But I don't know. I think when I plan things, I kind of almost plan it in the abstract. So I'll make loads of mood boards and I'll talk about the styling and I'll talk about the choreography and I'll do all that. And then we get to a rehearsal and I'm like, oh, it's me that has to do that. Why have I done this to myself? But in a way, I think that's cool because it pushes it to be, I'll plan it as completely as I want it. And then I have to make myself man up, woman up. Is it almost, is it almost like make yourself believe in it in a way? Yeah, I think so. Like I kind of build... Trusting the ideas. It's been fun in this moment in time to be able to build a performance that I feel really helps tell the stories. And I think we do that in the band, but there's, you know, there's always constraints when within a format of an indie rock band that mm. don't exist in this iteration, I think. So, and there's stuff that I'll do in this show that these guys, those guys would be horrified by, I'm sure. <laughs> they would not want to do it. So, um, and I think that's totally valid. Yeah, it's been fun to think of things that are more theatrical and yeah, not having to fit into a structure that's not necessarily designed for you to be in. Well, it's really exciting to be at the very beginning of this journey for you. And, um, and and we can't wait to watch you blossom through it as well. Lauren Maybury and Shame is your hottest record in the world. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. This is Radio 1's hottest record. <laughs>